In this tutorial, you will learn how to create some animations. Hello, and welcome to how to make a Vampire Survivors clone in Godot 4. So today we're just going to be working on some animations, and this should be very quick. So what we're going to be doing for our player is when it turns from, um, when we start walking left, we want it to be facing left. We also want it to be facing right. So we can edit this thing called flip H and based on where we move, it can move to that direction. So I'm just going to go back into our uh, script. I'm just going to quickly get my reference up and all that's needed to be done here is to just say if mov dot X is greater than zero, sorry, mov.x, which is the vector two we already are using from our movement variable, is greater than zero. So this is the x coordinate of the vector two, so this is just that one. We're going to do sprite. Oh, I just remembered, we haven't done already on ready bars, so we can reference our variables with various different methods. So we can do an on ready var on our sprite 2D. So, and this is done just by doing on ready var sprite, and then we can just type in sprite 2D, and we can reference this. So there's a couple of additional ways to actually reference a sprite. You can also use access as unique name, which we'll do in a, in a tiny bit. So from there, we can just do sprite dot flip h equals true. Elif mov dot x is less than zero. We'll do sprite dot flip h equal false. So pretty much based on our x value in our movement, if it's greater than zero, we'll flip h. Else we won't flip h, which is just the sprite 2D. So now when we run this, we should actually be able to, yeah, you can kind of see that we're swapping between them, which is all pretty cool. Now, I also want to create the walking animation. So if we go in there, you'll see that we had two frames of our sprite. And when we increase the frame by one, you can see that it moves a little bit. And what I want to turn this is into, well, I want to turn this into a walking animation. So I'm just going to quickly add a new node called a timer. And a timer is effectively just a stopwatch. So we are able to set this as a one shot, which means it only runs once. It doesn't continually run. And I'm going to set the wait time, which is just the cooldown of it as 0 0.2 seconds. And I'm also just going to rename this as walk timer. I'm also going to be setting this as a access as unique name. And the reason we do this is because it can be easier to reference. So walk timer, walk timer equals get node. walk timer. So there's many different ways to, well, there's three different ways to reference your nodes. So you can do it with an on ready var, you can do it with a unique access path by doing this way, you just have to make sure that it has that percentage uh, signed there. And then you can also do it by directly referencing it by just putting the dollar sign and doing camera 2D and this will reference the camera 2D, but we're not going to do that. So in order to get our walking animation, we're going to do if mov does not equal vector 2 dot zero, that just means there is movement. If walk timer dot is stopped. So if it's not running, if the timer is not running, we're going to do a if sprite 
dot frame is greater or equal to sprite dot h frames minus one and we're doing minus one because on our sprite today the frames start at zero the h frames start at one sprite dot frame equals zero else sprite dot frame plus equals one so this is just going to loop and then afterwards we're going to make sure that the walk timer starts so we do that just with dot start function so now every single time we move it's going to check the timer and if the timer is not running it's going to increase the frames by one until it's above the threshold and then it resets back to zero because there's only two frames it's pretty simple so now when we move we get this little walking animation and we flip when we go left we flip when we go right all pretty simple now we all need to also do this for our kobold i renamed this to kobold rather than kobold so the uh this is all pretty simple as well so we're just going to do the flip h very quickly as well so if direction this time because direction is dictating where the kobold goes we're going to be if direction x is greater than 0 0.1 sprite once again need to do an on ready var sprite equals Sprite 2D, sprite dot flip h equals true. L if direction dot x is less than negative 0 0.1, sprite dot flip h h equals false. So the reason we're having a gap between in um, 0 0.1 and negative 0 0.1 is just to stop incessant flipping. So now when we so when we go to the right side of the kobold, it should flip. Yep, it flips. And now it's going to be facing the direction it chases us. Now, instead of doing the way we animated our player sprite, you know, once again, it's the same basic concept. This has one frame of animation, very simple. We're going to be using an animation player. Now, the reason we're going to be doing this is because I want this to run all the time. So I'm going to create an animation player and I'm going to create a new animation called walk. And I'm going to make this animation play for 0 0.6 seconds. And I'm going to make this a repeating animation. So just has an animation loop. And we're going to be using keyframes to sort of say what we want each value to be. So I want the first frame to be frame 0. I'm going to create a reset track just so it knows what the standard is. I'm going to make in 0 0.3 frame one, and then in 0 0.6, I'm going to reset back to zero. So now when we play this, we'll get a little bit of a walking animation, all pretty simple. So to reference this, I'm going to just do another on ready var. The reason I'm doing all these on ready vars is for management. I like being able to reference everything up here and if I ever change the animation path and I reference it in multiple places, it may be good to just being able to change it once up here. Alternatively, of course, you can do it with the uh, unique path up here so you don't even have to change it unless you change the name. So in order for this to play, we're going to be creating a function ready, which is a Godot function. And this ready function just runs once at the very beginning. So we're going to do Adam, Adam dot play. And then we are going to do walk. Now, when we play, 
you can see that it is walking towards us doing its animation when we move it works so we always want the cobalt to be doing the animation so that's why i'm using the animation tree and i'm using code to animate the player To make games in Godot, it is very important to reference nodes and manipulate their values. This is commonly done through onReady variables. You have four different ways of referencing a node. Number one, directly reference it with the dollar sign at the start and then type in the name with the path of the node. Number two, use an onReady variable to and then reference the path of the node. Number three, on ready variable with access as, as unique name and using the get node function. Number four, using a diverse function to fetch a node. All of these have advantages and disadvantages. Direct reference is the easiest to type, but if you ever change the name or path, you will have to change it in multiple areas. On ready variables with a reference to the node path takes a bit more time to type, but if you change the name or path, you will only need to change it in one area. On ready variables with access as unique names let you change the path freely, but the node needs to have a unique name in order to reference it. If you change the name of that variable, you will also have to change it in the on ready variable. Using a function to fetch the node is powerful if you don't know the exact path of the node, but it's also going to require the most amount of effort to set up. Chances are that you will use all of these methodologies at some point, and while a, some are better than others in certain situations, they all basically achieve the same thing. Use what you're most comfortable with at the task at hand.